Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. Uh, today again, we talk about a surgical procedure, one of the commonest surgical procedures that we do, and look at its impact on future fertility. We come to my myomectomies. The question now comes up, very commonly asked is, do you open the cavity when you remove a fibroid? Common sense as well as evidence suggests that you don't. This has been ingrained since right from our training days. And what do we believe? We believe that it weakens the uterine structure, which is entirely true. It does weaken the entire st structure. And if you open, there is evidence that these women do better in a cesarean section. Now, you'll come across surgeons who are extremely careful. And I believe they are rightfully so. Some try their best and the cavity continues to be open because that's how fibroids are. Some are very complex. While there are equally some in which try as you may, the surgeon cannot prevent it. While in others, surgical technique is a cause for concern and adhesions and, and generally the uterine uh, lining or rather the endometrium gets damaged. Now let's look at this paper and what they looked at is they looked at do sine K form as a complication of a myomectomy. Now what they used here was a laparotomy and not a laparoscopy. But let's see the overall the logic should be the same. Laparoscopy is a preferred approach. Laparotomy in very large fibroids may be the only option. Opening the cavity will have the very much the same impact, presumably. So, we know that myomas complicate between 5 and 10% of the infertile women. Laparotomy and myomectomy are one of the options in large multiple myomas. A prospective study between 2009 and 2014, 18 to 45 years of age, a laparotomy and myomectomy. Myoma of more than 9 cm or multiple myoma and excluded subserosal myomectomy. And what they looked at is, is an impact intrauterine in the post-operative period in the way of adhesions and they classified them into simple adhesions, velamentous less than a third of the cavity or complex adhesions, fibrous or muscular covering more than a third of the cavity. 117 women underwent an open myomectomy. 30 women underwent myomectomy for a single fibroid, a mean size of 10 cm. Other women had multiple fibroids, a mean of 6.32 fibroids. The cavity was opened in 38% of cases and they used an anti-adhesion gel. Diagnostic hysteroscopy was done six to eight weeks later. And this is surprising now. If you look at the results, the results do indicate that adhesions do form in triuterine. And all of us know how complicated it is to treat these adhesions and create an endometrium that grows. Ashimans is one of our biggest challenges that we face. So when you look at, if you open the cavity, the first complication that stares you in the face is intrauterine adhesions and 26% of women had intrauterine adhesions. 11 out of the 25 had complex adhesions. 14 women had simple adhesions which were corrected. What is the risk factor for adhesions? Opening the cavity was a single most important risk factor for dense adhesions at an odds ratio of 2.5. Number of myomas did not make a huge difference. Now, if you used intrauterine barrier gel, your chance of having intrauterine adhesions was lower than not using it. So, yes, if you do a myomectomy, even when you have not opened the cavity in large fibroids, 
you seem to cause a mild amount of irritations, which do not seem to be a big have a huge effect on your success rate. But if you open the cavity, here lies the evidence that you not only cause a through serosa to endometrial damage, but you also give a higher chance of adhesions, many of them dense adhesions. And this is probably one of the major risk factors when you decide to go for a myomectomy. From a surgical point of view, I would say be careful as you normally are. Many of us are trained in doing myomectomies and in those cases try our best to avoid the endometrium. Equally, at times when you feel that you may require additional help, ask for that help because we know that these surgeries going wrong or getting more complicated tends to have one of the highest risk factors for a future pregnancy. Thank you very much. If you do like these talks, do share them. It takes me a long time to prepare it and I, I enjoy doing it. And I'd be, it would also be helpful as they get shared across. Thank you very much.